we got a four round super flex tight end premium 1.5 on the premium so to start this thing off we're going to kind of jump six picks at a time we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the first six we've talked about them a ton there you know there's a little bit of variation i think they're all you know pretty solid picks at this point so in this particular mock we had caleb williams we had marvin harrison at one two we had neighbors at one three we had Jaden daniels at one four uh, we had Roma Dunze at one five and we had Drake May at one six. Uh, any any anything you want to quickly add to any of this right here through the first six, Austin? No, I don't really have a whole lot to add, Casey. This is a uh, this is pretty standard. It's uh, you know, these are pretty much interchangeable. Some of these assets, but for the most part, I think this is pretty close. I, don't, I, I didn't mind this. What yeah. about you? No, same. I think uh, I'm, I'm cool with really any version that you want to chop up these first six with. I, you know, I like, I probably like May a little higher, uh, but I'll take the. I like, I like the May value right now. May May falls sometimes even later in drafts, and and I like that. I'm, I he's he was my QB two. Jaden Daniels obviously offers the legs. I like May a lot. May off also offers some legs. It's just not the extreme athleticism of of Daniels. So. Uh, but I don't hate that first one through six. So let's keep it moving. Let's hit this one through seven. We got Brock Bowers at the one seven. Then we got JJ McCarthy at one eight. We got Lad McConkey at one nine. We got Jonathan Brooks here at the one ten. We got Brian Thomas at the one eleven, and we have Xavier Worthy uh, at the one twelve. You know, Brian Thomas seems to be the player in some of these FFPC drafts that I saw that that kind of has been on the slide a little bit. He's the one that I see falling down into the second round. Not not far. It's usually two one, two two. But Jonathan Brooks is the one that is that has come up and and put a stranglehold on the first round. And you know, you talked about it before the draft and right after the draft. And then you know, it felt a little flat. And then now all of a sudden, it's really picked up steam. These two other running backs, and and mostly Jonathan Brooks is getting the first round love, super flex tight end premium. Um, and Brian Thomas fallen. And I, you know what? I'm 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 kind of here for it. I kind of like it. I can't. I'm not. I'm not that upset about it. Uh, but. I think this is the most interesting first part of the draft. You know, you could lump McCarthy and Bowers into this, but I think those guys are, are kind of the next two picks, whichever way you want to do it. And then that nine through 12 eight, and into even really two, 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 three is pretty interesting. So kind of what's your take on what you're doing and how you're playing one nine to one twelve here? Uh, so I'll read through my rankings real quick for that range. One nine, I have Brian Thomas Jr. One ten, Xavier Worthy. One eleven, Jonathan Brooks. And one twelve, I have Lad McConkey Casey. I'm back. I'm finally in. <laughs> I'm finally in. I know I had him like early to mid second, but but here I am, man. I, I have him in the first. Um, I think for the most part this is pretty close, and I think you were spot on with what you said. I am I am seeing everywhere Brian Thomas Jr. either staying put towards the end of the first or sliding even further to like very late first early early second more of late first um i i don't know if i agree with it i'm seeing brooks like i predicted man it's it it doesn't surprise me and i'm not like yeah. sitting here like tooting my horn like i'm not i'm not i'm, I'm not doing any of that i'm just it doesn't surprise me it can't we kind of see it every year man it's like there might be a running back that a lot of people are interested in. Let's talk about somebody like like Ken Walker, right? People mm -hmm. were in on him, but he wasn't. It, it's like as we got closer to the actual draft, the, you're, I'm talking your rookie drafts. It's like these type of backs, like Jonathan Brooks, you see them shoot up a little bit, a few spots, right? It's people are like, you know what, man? I'd rather the running back one in this class rather than like the wide receiver's five or six, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of think that's their thought process and I'm on board with it, right? I think Jonathan Brooks, who in my ranks now is the 111. Where did he go in this draft, Casey? The 110, did 110. you say? Yep. So it's it's right there, right? I get it. Uh, I see eye to eye with them and, uh, you know, he got the draft capital. He had the collegiate production. He's got the size. I like Jonathan Brooks, man. He's been my RB1 for a long time and I think that, I think, every, I think consensus is, is again, fully on board with it. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. 
I like the way this board played out. I'd go worthy over Brian Thomas there. Uh, and I could I could see sneaking maybe, you know, the quarterbacks up a little bit in this draft. We'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, like like Ladd at one nine, I could take Worthy or Ladd there. Um, and all off season long, I've had Ladd and I draft post draft. I've kind of never really changed on how how the next how I view the next three was Ladd, Brian Thomas, and Xavier Worthy. But and I've had you know Trey Benson and and Brooks kind of in a in a tier as well, but you know below those guys. But at this point, I almost think I gotta gotta bring Brooks and Benson for that matter, because I don't see a, a a huge difference between those two guys. Um, you know, I'm okay. I'm saying Brooks first. That's fine. I, I get it, and I'm okay. I understand the the rationale by putting them up there. Um, but I, I think they have to be maybe integrated into a larger tier now for me. Um, and Brian Thomas definitely would be the one, the odd man out for me. I just. He seems the most boomer bust out of those guys, but they all mm-hmm. have a little bit to it. And and I'm you know I'm I'm not anti Brian Thomas. I've been you know in on him the whole time, but I, he's the one that publicly I see slipping. Let's say somebody like a Brian Thomas slips down to a two one. Um, are you and you and you have like a like a two four or five? Are you trying to figure out how to navigate your way to that two one to grab Brian Thomas there, or, or is is that interesting to you, or are you just sitting tight? So if I have like the two five, for example, that's somebody closer to like Xavier Legat, Jalen Polk, right? So let, let's just take one of those receivers, for example, and then add what uh, another late second or early third. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's like similar to the price range that it would cost to get you to move up to go land him. I think it's worth it, man. I I think Brian Thomas Jr. is yeah. he, he's a prospect that I'm very much in on. Um, and I understand the concerns. I wish that the, you know, collegiate production, the success was larger than, you know, than it was. Right. Of course, this mm-hmm. season was glaring. But if you take this year away. Right. Of course, totally different profile. Right. But you could say that a lot of, uh, about sure. so many prospects. Right. For sure. You know, I think you could view it either way. If you're sitting on the two one and Brian Thomas falls to you, you can auto smash that thing. Or now you have an, uh, you know, a, a, a possible get paid more than anybody thought you would get paid to maybe move back off of that pick. Maybe if mm-hmm. you're not a huge Brian Thomas guy, but maybe somebody like you is sitting there at the two four two five, and they're like, "Hey, I'll give you this two four and a two next year to uh, come up here and grab." You know, basically, uh, me and Big Co were in that spot, and what we tried to do is tried to trade that basically back as far as we in far as we could into the second and net a first right there because Brian Thomas is typically worth a first maybe somebody was in there and that's where he typically goes so Brian Thomas is kind of a a, an enigma where he could be a big gift or it could be a gift in the other direction where he slipped a little bit and somebody's willing to move back because hey I like Pearsall A.D. Mitchell uh, Leggett (laughs) maybe you think Benson or one of those quarterbacks are going to slip too so uh, he's an interesting one. He he seems to be in in drafts right now the wild card. I would I would put the, put it that way uh, as far as back half of the first and Brooks getting up in there. You know you gotta you gotta love the landing spot. You gotta love the capital. You you, I, you got you like the player without the ACL. I think he would have been even stronger uh, coming all off season long. But now it feels like the you know the push is on right now. Uh, and you could you could see a little bit of a slow start, but. Uh, I'm, I am falling in, in like with a lot of what the Carolina Panthers have going on, right? Um, you have a, a, a guy who has now put a track record at two different places as, as, as in Canales as their head coach. Uh, and, and a lot of the times I'm not, of course I'm buying into players, but I'm buying into systems and, and mm-hmm. guys, coaches, teams who seem to have plans and blueprints and go out and and execute those things and it just seems like everything that carolina is doing is very deliberate and it's not the way that carolina seemed last year with frank reich and all that even though i wanted to give frank the benefit of the doubt it was still a little tepid i wasn't all in um you know now you you do have to get over a meddling owner a little bit there but um i i like where everything's going they've pushed it all in on the offensive line trying to fix that they went and got a receiver who can separate they went and got a model of a of a receiver that that fits with canales and in leg uh and that just seems like i said very intentional and you know to buy into maybe this early could, of what canales is building could really reap some big benefits there. It also could be a big Fugazi and he could be terrible and, and be coordinator face. Like we talk about some guys are just coordinators, but 
again, he seems to be handling things well and have intention and knowing what guys fit into exactly what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, the fact that he's the offensive mind that is, has since brought back two quarterbacks from the dead and resurrected some offenses and Geno Smith and, and um, Baker Mayfield, I, I think that's, that's something to be uh, stared at for a long time. And I think you're going to see the same with Bryce. Bryce is going to come back from the dead. Will he be on CJ Stroud's level? Probably not. But I think, I think this card or this, uh, this Carolina team really takes a big step forward. So Jonathan Brooks, I think, warranted being up in here. And really, at the end of the day, when you get through, you're doing your running back rankings, like it doesn't take too long until you're in a spot where you're going, well, damn, I can either take like Joe Mixon or I could take Jonathan Brooks or, you know, I could take Rashad White or J- or Jonathan uh, James Cook or I could take Jonathan Brooks. And it's like every time I pretty much lean Jonathan Brooks there. So that's telling me, mm-hmm. hey, I, I, I it d- doesn't take but, you know, six, seven, eight, nine running backs until you go, damn, I want Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson over those guys. So I get it, man. Uh, supply and demand and, and of, of what could be a bell cow and and youth on your side as a as opposed to, hey, we know Mixon's good, but he's, you know, 28 you know, going to a new spot. And so you get a younger guy who could have sent potentially bell cow, all the writings on the wall of some good things. So spend enough time on that. Let's, uh, you got any closing thoughts on that Austin until we move to the next section here? Uh, the, the Panthers have done a really good job, man. Jatavian Clowney as well. Jatavian Sanders. Uh, they, they've added a lot of valuable pieces, but, uh, who, uh, who would you like to talk about next? Do you want to continue to move on in, in this, in this mock draft that we yeah. completed? Yeah. Let's, let's shoot over to the second round here. We got Keon Coleman going two one Benson going two two Bo Nix going two three Polk at two four AD Mitchell two five. And then we got Penix, uh, at the two six spot. What do you uh, find interesting here or, or like, or dislike, uh, two one through two six here. I wish this. I wish this draft was a little more chaotic, man. This was like a pretty, pretty yeah. good draft, at least in my opinion. I think and it people, kind of have, uh, people are settling in, right? You know, there's not a yeah. there's there there's still plenty of variance because it just takes one or two guys in there. But people are starting to settle into uh, kind of who and what and where, right? Bo Nix is is a little early for me. I'm okay with this. I don't mind this. He got the draft capital. He is the QB one for an NFL franchise. He's going to be the guy until he, for the foreseeable future. That is Bo Nix until he loses the job, right? Like it's his job. Mm-hmm. And I get taking him here at the two, three. You could argue it's really, really good value, especially if he hits. I don't necessarily, I'm not a big advocate of Bo Nix. That's why I have him at the, I have Bo Nix at the two Oh six. He went two Oh three here. Um, not terribly off. Again, like this person could look like a genius if Bo Nix hits. Uh, I could look like an idiot if he do- if he you know if he hits. But at the same time, it's just for me. It's it's what did I see from the tape? What do the analytics tell me? Do I like this prospect? Right? Who knows how they're actually going to be in the NFL? Do I like them as a prospect? And that's how I really prioritize certain players. That's how I make my rankings. That's a big part of my evaluation. And. Uh, uh, so, so I don't, I don't even hate this. It's just I'm a little bit lower on Bo Nix. Jalen Polk, man, two four. Look, I have Polk at the two five in my rankings. This is pretty much spot on. And I'll tell you what, Polk, in my opinion, is a value. That 37 overall draft capital to New England. I think he's going to be the wide receiver one. I know Javon Baker ended up going to New England day three, the fourth round. But I, I, I think that Polk is, is wildly under, under appreciated he's not talked about enough again we're talking about potentially uh he, he's got a clear path to being the wide receiver one with drake may and you're able to get him in the mid second in most drafts like it's it like sign me up man like i i love it i really really like jalen polk and that's your favorite team casey so you probably like him more <laughs> than me man. um i think uh, it's still a little early for polk for me there personally where do you where do you where do you have polk pull up the rankings real quick it's, i got it's so wild man like like it's so wild to see Polk fall to like the late second for yeah, me. It's just it's just so much makes sense, you know. I got Polk back half of the second. You know, like this, 20, 21, 22. I don't even think it's like a slight on Polk. I don't think people dislike Polk. I think people just like so many prospects in this class. I think it just shows you how good this twenty twenty four class really is. Yeah, uh, that's that's my opinion, and I feel pretty confident in that. You know, this is a good class. Yeah, for for me, it's Coleman a little early, uh, Penix mm. a little late. I, I would move Penix and and Bo Nix uh, up to the 
up to the front half of this round and Benson in there. Like I said, I like I got the two running backs pretty closely uh, in the same tier. And maybe it's time to move those guys up into the tier with those wide receivers. Um, and then whether I like Bo Nix or not is sort of irrelevant. He, he's going to be the starter. And I, I do think the scheme fit is is pretty decent for uh, what Sean Payton and, and how he likes to operate bone, like just kind of the, the, the stuff that they were doing at Oregon's, you know, and, and Nick's efficiency at Oregon, the things he did well, I think that meshes up well with, with Sean Payton. Will it work out? I, you know, I don't know. We know that that's a 50, 50 proposition at, at best right now. Um, and Penix is just, you know, obviously if you've been messing with us for a while, you know, that big Penix energy over here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of insulation, a, a top 10 pick in there and, and gonna, you know, at least ride the bench for a year the foreseeable future we'll see what it is but i believe in the talent a lot and i you know so i'm i, I would i would put him up there i'd move polk back i'd move coleman back a little bit so uh that that's kind of way that i see that uh you want to keep it moving here yeah let's do it let's do it the back six here ricky pearsall ben sinnett uh, that's, that was my pick uh leggett over t- at 29 burton at 210 Corum at 211 and Franklin at 212. So I took Sinnott. I sh- what I should have done is see see if Sinnott would fall there and just take in Leggett um, because, you know, that was the decision that I was making there from right. from 28 to 29. And and but I, I love I absolutely love Sinnott there. Pearsall at 27, I think, is is awesome. I uh, love love that uh, that this middle second here is just littered with potential upside and a lot of fun. Uh, and then you kind of bring Burton into the fold here, which, you know, back half of the at, at 210, like, I got to be honest, like, I think I'd rather shoot my shot on Burton than I would on Polk. So that's about where I feel comfortable taking Burton. I hope that he slips a little bit if I'm not able to get in that range uh, and, and can fall to the third, which is about where our ADP is is kind of currently showing him r- right around the three. So that you know, that's the average, obviously. Blake Quorum at two eleven. I don't really have a problem with that as long as Blake's in the back half of the second round. That's that's cool with me. Already some talk of Kyron missing a little bit of time. It's we're not even in a training camp yet, so I really don't care. Wake me up when that happens. Um, and then Troy Franklin at two twelve. I'm probably taking those other two running backs over him, Wright and Lloyd potentially. But then I'm okay with taking that stab. How about you? How, how do you view the back half of this uh, second round uh, here? Let me ask you a question just okay. before I answer that. So I don't hate that take that you had. I don't agree with it, but I'm not terribly off. Uh, you have Burton, who is my wide receiver 12. You you think you or you mentioned you prefer Burton over Polk. So Polk is my receiver 10. Burton is 12. They're pretty close. Um, but I do candidly prefer Polk. Sell me. What, what, Casey, why do you prefer uh, Jermaine Burton over Jalen Polk? I just I think there's I think there's much more of a ceiling with what Jermaine mm-hmm. Burton can do. There's just, there's, there's more excitement explosion. Uh, I feel like a guy like Jermaine Burton, the, the risk is built in and, and we're about to do another show and I'll probably say the same things. I'll try to save some of it, but basically the way I see, I, I like Polk. I think Polk's a good, just sturdy, good, solid player. Um, but, but linked to potentially a quarterback that we're not a hundred percent sure on, on if he can play or not. Again, it's a rookie and I like may a lot, 50 50 proposition and i think polk's good and he's he fits as a fits as a new england player i'm i'm fine with getting polk once uh, you know basically for me it's it's those middle guys pearsall coleman mitchell leggett and and then Sinnott, burton and then a tear break and then polk uh jumps in there for me so um basically it's it's just that Jermaine Burton is dripping with that that crazy upside and i know some people will say polk's there too it's just the explosion of of Burton and I just feel like being tied to Burrow and if we want to talk just on the value side of things like I don't know that we're going to be out there seeing crazy plays from Jalen Polk right off the rip Mm -hmm. but you could be seeing some crazy plays from Jermaine Burton right off the rip and I just feel like that value will just shoot up with the questions of what T Higgins is going to be or where he's going to be and then Jermaine Burton um, potentially just being that answer for them if, if T does happen to walk away the mold of the player that one, one being a really explosive high octane kind of player who can, who can do a lot of different things and, and Polk can as well, but Polk does a lot more of the dirty work definitely feels like a, a new England guy. So uh, for me, it's like you got a hard hat when I've used this uh, analogy for AD Mitchell versus Polk, 
Polk is like a hard hat, lunch pail, seemingly kind of guy where a guy like Burton is just like screaming with, you know, uh, mutual fund trading that that could really net you some <laughs> some million dollar yeah. returns really fast um, or, you know, could potentially, uh, you know, land you with some charges uh, that you're not super stoked about because, you did, you know, some fraudulent things happened. Um, hey, no, that, that's a good analogy. I uh, I was just curious, like, look, man, I, I understand the upside with Jermaine Burton and I'll keep it quick, like zero drops, uh, four, four, five, 40 time. 20.5 yards per reception, right? Like there, it's glaring, Casey, his upside. That is 18.1% uh, target share uh, at Georgia, true freshman. I mean, he, this, 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 we're talking about Jermaine Burton. He produced with, you know, Lad McConkey, James Cook, A.D. Mitchell, uh, you know, Brock Bowers, Darnell Washington, like a lot of, did I say George Pickens? Like a lot of big names uh, producing at Georgia and Al at Alabama. I, I completely understand it. I just, I'm not, you know, I, I, if we see T Higgins get moved, Casey, you better believe he's going to, you better believe it's going to be crazy, man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, but, uh, I'll, I'll keep it going, man. Um, this, uh, this back half of the second though, I think, I think we got a lot of values. I really, really like Jermaine Burton. Like, like we were just talking about, I'm starting to really like Blake Corum, man, Blake Corum. I talk about Kyron Williams sleeper notification that I got, uh, Kyron Williams missing OTAs with a foot injury. I mean, I'm not saying, uh, you know, it's still Kyron's job. It is still Kyron's job. I want to be very clear. I can already see the hype building up for, I can already see the price increase in, you know, uh, in uh, Blake Corum, that is. Uh, he got that day two running back draft capital, which I personally really enjoy seeing. But man, that he is, Blake Corum, that is, is my RB3 in this class. And he's still there. He's uh, He's creeping up just a little bit, man. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 when you've had a history of foot and ankle injuries, that that that's not that great of a thing to uh, see at this moment. But again, it is. We're not even in June yet, so I'll you know we'll we'll see as training camp. And, and it's never I've never been anti Corum. Corum was right with Wright and Lloyd in my tier three of running backs, and then I just if Kyron's healthy and playing, I mean, that's he put up CMC level points i mean i just i can't disregard that because some people feel some type of way about his draft capital um and that he can't hold up and it's just like and and they drafted quorum for a reason so that they don't have to have a decrease in uh the backup running back when he comes in but yeah and to keep kyron potentially fresh or this is the best pick you ever could have made at at 211 i i sure like give me all the quorum i'm just i'm not into taking him in the two three two four range uh, where sometimes I see him going, uh, I'll, 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 I'll take this shot all day long. Uh, but it's really just cost because I do think if Kyron's healthy and playing, I, I think Corum's role is probably semi limited. Um, and I think he's a good player. So that's where I kind of, I, I like the value in Corum here at two eleven. That's, that's just a fine pick. I wholeheartedly agree, man. I yeah. think the final player I want to talk about before we move on is myself. Uh, why, why, why did I fall so far here, man? Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> talk, talk about Ricky Pearsall, man. We're talking about a first-round wide receiver to the San Francisco 49ers. And the fact that you can land him here, at, yeah. I'm seeing him go, man, I, somebody sent me a, a message on Twitter the other day, 303. We're talking about a first-round yeah. wide receiver. He didn't go quite that late here. Look, man, if you get that type of draft capital, it's for a reason. It might suck for a year. You might be behind Debo, Ayuk. George Kittle, CMC, I get it. You are a first round pick. Let me let me say it again. You are not going to just be forgotten. You are going to be pri you were prioritized in the draft. You will be prioritized eventually in your career. And we're playing Dynasty, Casey. Yeah. You need patience. It is a necessary prerequisite for Dynasty. I would like to believe that most GMs should have it. I don't know if they do. Right. Uh, they probably don't. But uh, I I just man, I I love. I think I think. Here's what I'll say. I think buying Ricky Pearsall early to mid season, you know, I'm I, I, right now. I'm anticipating no trades. I don't. I think Debo will stay. I think that Ayuk will stay. Maybe I'm wrong, but but if they stay, man, I think I think the right choice is to buy low on Ricky Pearsall a few games into the season. I think you'll be able to get him even cheaper. 
And uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, a lot of, I just think that there's GMs out there that are, that will not be pa- patient enough. They're, they're just simply going to say, you know what, whatever, man, just, just, I want to win now. And that's kind of when you strike for Ricky Pearsall. Yeah. I mean, this is, I think that's <clears throat> great, great uh, Ricky Pearsall value there. Like you said, first round wide receiver, Lo- love the, love the draft capital, love the team, love the fit. Like I said, with, with, with the Panthers and, and, um, and Brooks and kind of where they're going. The Niners draft you up, my ears perk up and I go, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then while we're in the first round, let's, let's, you know, Brand, Brandon Ayuk, nobody, nobody was super thrilled with that pick. Took a minute and then yep. he's, he's awesome. So I'll, I'll, I, I can fully agree with that right there. Uh, so let's keep this moving here so we can get through this. Uh, th- the third round, we got Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, Roman Wilson, Malachi Corley, Jatavion Sanders and Jerome Baker there. I love I love the Wright and the Lloyd there. I think that's those are great picks. Both those landing spots are awesome. Uh, in the same vein of Kyron Williams, Josh Jacobs' hamstring holding him out of OTAs right now. Again, not terribly worried about it, but Lloyd has three down skill set, I think, and and is a very fun, good player, and he's gonna get some run. And Jalen Wright is is just basically like, you know, we've pointed it out before, but right there with some of the speed stuff that Achan does right and you know so they have a type they pick the, the same type you saw what Achan Achan did in his limited roles and limited opportunities there uh Mostert's not long for being there but he also absolutely slayed at 31 with the Miami Dolphins so there is room to absolutely slay you just might have to be a little patience or have a little patience and right right is uh I think the right man for the job there no pun intended I guess uh malachi corley at three four i probably would would let him slide a hair i'd like to see baker um i would maybe take mcmillan over him i like him better as a player but i like i still like corley a lot i tried to play a game in one of my drafts of of taking corley and hoping that mcmillan would slide a couple picks and i could trade back into the later third and grab him and i I couldn't like Tried to trade one guy, wasn't having it. The next guy got on the clock, bang, picked him right away. And I was like, fuck, if somebody picks him right away. You're like, fuck, I'm not going to be able to trade with that guy. So I spent two days trying to, you know, finagle a deal and, and didn't do it. So got got hurt playing games. And then that made me realize, like, I do kind of want McMillan over Corley. Although, you know, Corley's going to get an opportunity seemingly this year. But a lot, lot of shade on Corley right now. Uh, people talk on a lot of shit about about Corley and 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 his game. So we shall see. It's no 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 shade on Corley at all for me. I, I I'll gladly take a middle three here. J T Sanders of course was my three was my uh, tight end two down to my tight end three, but but still love the value of him. And Baker is a smash in the middle of the third. So any, what are your th- Roman Wilson is the one that I think I have to draft him. I'm just not all that thrilled to put him on my team. Him being the two for the the Steelers, I, it, it could be awesome, and I could be eating my words. And they, obviously, that's a team when again when they draft a wide receiver, your ears should perk up. I'm just not sold on him being the two on a team. I I don't know, uh, but and I could be wrong here. So, Austin, take it away with this, and then uh, we'll we'll go rapid fire for the last six in this round and the last uh, fourth round here. Yeah, uh, Jalen Wright, Casey, talk to me about him. Where Where is he in your rankings right now? I have Jalen Wright at the 305. Uh, 26 is, overall. Okay, so that is the 303, or 302 rather, 302. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he went 30, he went 31 here. Um, so Wright's tough for me, man. I, I, I was kind of hoping he would get better draft capital. Uh, you know, I wish that, you know, he, he did have good collegiate production this past season. I, I like the, you know, a thousand plus rushing yards, the four was it four, three, eight, 40 time. I think mm. it, it whatever, whatever it was, it was really, really good at the NFL combine. Um, and the landing spot, it kind of is what it is. I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't love it. Right. I don't think most it will be there for super long. Um, you know, maybe it's only another year. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what, yeah. what the future holds for Raheem Oster, but uh, Devon A. Chan, man, if you're a Devon A. Chan owner, you have to be frustrated, I think is the word that I would use, uh, a little a little bent out of shape, right? Because Jalen Wright's not just a jag, right? He's not just a yeah. guy, man. He's 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 more than that. 
And this is this is going to be a little bit of a three headed monster. We'll see how things shake out. But I, I have Jalen Wright at the three five in my rankings. He went to three, three, one. Maybe I need to be a little bit more bullish. Like I'm fully aware and, and you know, knowledgeable of his profile. I think it's more of the landing spot that deterred me a little bit. But hey, man, if he hits, you got a running back that hit that you got in the third round of a rookie draft. So good on you. Right. Um, it, he's probably worth the stab. Um uh, let's talk a little uh, last play I want to talk about, and then we'll move on. Jatavian Sanders. Jatavian Sanders goes to three, five in this draft. Mm. It, in my rankings, I have Jatavian Sanders at the three, seven. I'm not quite as bullish on him, man. Uh, I think it was a good landing spot in Carolina. Ben Sinnott, man, he's just, he's just really grabbed that tight end two spot oh, in my sure. rankings candidly and i feel so good about it i feel like there's a true tier gap with Sinnott comfortably ahead of sanders yeah. uh, would you agree Do yeah you feel that way, way as well ha- you gotta have it that way you know you gotta it's it's so 100 that's kind of where i'm at casey let's uh let's go to the end of the third round yeah the back uh, half i like I, I got sanders at uh 29 overall so Comp, comparable and about where he mm-hmm. went here and I, I just they the the again Carolina falling in like with with what's going on over there um and Kate Otten was somebody who had the highest uh snap percentage of any tight end in the league last year at, at like 90 some percent so if you can get Jatavion Sanders on the field out there this is a good really good smooth uh runner smooth operator good good hands good pass catcher and and i think this is a really good value on him so all right to hit the back half of this third it's mcmillan you know i love him mccaffrey Mm -hmm. you know i took him over all these running backs here i just i should have let him again see just kind of slip instead of letting you know i feel like i might have boosted his adp here because all these drafts you know going to our adp Um, but i just i feel like man obviously came coming out of rice and and not not a whole lot of uh traction really coming in but then got higher capital than most i mean i'm not in the third round i'll bet on that last name i don't even give a shit like that's really i'm going to be as simple as you can that seems pretty simple to me uh that that's that's incredible pedigree right there um his father was an excellent receiver and then cmc and him you know him going from being a quarterback to being a, or a wide receiver um and then just you know i'm probably going to get get snaps right away uh in washington so i i just i i gotta I, I gotta put a little bit more i had him way down there and had to pull him up went and watched a little bit and man i, I just i gotta be into that and then of course vidal ray davis bucky irving rattler love all those guys love the we get into this back half of the third i love this uh you know i love the vidals the davises the irvings the estimates the tracy's the shipley's you know sign me up for all those guys um, at that point, I'll, I'll trade in uh, when those guys are on the board to, to try to snag one of them. Um, your yeah. thoughts on this back half of the third real quick so we could keep it moving? Yeah, two players I'll talk about real quick is Javon Baker. I have him at the three, 303 in my rankings, and he went here at the 3-6. Three, three, um, he has a – he has. I know I just said this about Jalen Polk, and I think Jalen Polk will be the one – but man, talk about someone with a very clear path to a lot of snaps, just a lot of playing time, a real chance at being the one or two in New England, right? Like besides Pop Douglas and Polk, I think Javon Baker is really in this conversation as well. Um, I don't, and I don't think he's going to be the one. I just, I just think that the fact that you can get Javon Baker, a very solid dart throw in the mid third, you know, I mean, again, I don't mean to sound like a broken record. Like he's worth the dart throw. He really is, man. The production at UCF, he, I, I like a lot about Javon Baker. Um, yeah. And I've talked about him in plenty of episodes in the past. And then the other player I want to talk about, Casey, you you were you were spot on. It was Luke McCaffrey, who someone that I, I am far from infatuated with, but I think history, and, and you know, I'm a big analytics guy. History will tell us. You take a chance on that day two receiver over the day three running back. They hit at a significantly higher rate. Yeah. So I just I just want to throw that out there. That's just history. Maybe it doesn't happen this <laughs> time. But maybe it doesn't, man. But but history will tell you. I mean, what was he? Uh, I think it was like 100th 100, 100 overall. He was literally yeah. the final pick of the 
third round, I believe. So just really, su- really surprising how early Luke McCaffrey went in the draft. Casey, uh, yeah, take num- us number away. 100. Yeah, take us away with the uh, fourth round of this draft. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Like I said, I like I like all these running backs. I like Rattler. Th- those are all really good picks here. I like I like the Vidal, the Ray Davis, the Irving. Then Estime starts you off at 4-1. Tracy at 4-2. Love those. And then Tez Walker, you can't really go wrong there. So we're still in the 4-2, 4-3 area, and I'm, I'm still finding guys that I don't mind taking. Uh, then Braylon Allen, look, if you have Brees Hall, chop away if not i'm probably staying away I'll, I'll, I'll see if he makes it to the free agent pool and, and scoop him up because i'm not afraid to have him but I, there's probably I'd, I'd take shipley i'll take a couple other guys over him at this point uh brandon rice four five shipley four six theo johnson four seven malik washington four eight eric all four nine uh rashi ali uh four ten i don't even know who this player is that got drafted here uh the i guess it's the rugby guy from uh lewis reese zamet uh, from uh, for the, the Chiefs took so hey good shot on you there J Mike uh, and then cowing at 412 so um, lot still some good shots I like Washington I like cowing uh, Eric all sure take a shot on him. Theo Johnson Rask score uh, crusher uh, and we don't know what Darren Waller so tight end premium take a shot Ali I mean going to the Ravens sure why not uh, Shipley to the to the Eagles with Barkley sure why not Brandon Rice legacy name take a shot sure uh thoughts on the fourth round and we can wrap this up yep uh audrick estime tyron tracy jr going four one four two in this draft great value man i have them at three eight three nine in in my draft in my in my rankings rather so i i think again really solid value i think these are two running backs that if you got fourth rounders if you got fourth round picks why not take the chance uh, I, I like the landing spot for both of these players in denver in New York where they don't I know Javante is there I'm not necessarily sure what Sean Payton thinks of him it doesn't seem to be too good uh you know and then Singletary who you know no disrespect to Singletary he's had a successful career in the NFL good for him uh but Tyron Tracy man good landing spot obviously Devin Singletary is no Saquon Barkley I'll just keep it at that um Braylon Allen difficult right I I I liked a lot about the prospect just just stuck behind Brees it is what it is. Uh, Brendan Rice, hey, why not, man? Take take that shot in the fourth round. Uh, Theo Johnson, I think this is a good value. I like Theo at the 4-7. You know I like Malik Washington a lot, Casey, at the 4-8. And uh, Jacob Cowing, why not, man? Final pick in the draft. Was he a fourth-round pick, late fourth for the uh, for your Niners? Niners. So, uh, yeah, why not, man? Jacob Cowing, uh, he, he, he had his collegiate production was was absolutely there. It was it was it was very nice. Yeah. So uh, this was this was a good draft, man. Overall, like very nothing that really stuck out. And I I, it was good. Like I think these were 12 GMs that knew what they were doing. Yeah. No, this this is a great draft. Um, Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. This was a draft uh, on on the Patreons on the Discord. So make sure you're signed up for that. Uh, Come. You got a free channel. We have a five dollar holler channel that that. you get access to the ADP. You get access to the draft kit Jason has put together with all sorts of information from a bunch of the rookies. Uh, lots of good stuff over there. We got rookie ADP. We got post draft ADP. We got mocks going down all the time. We got roster reviews kicking back up over there on the Patreon. You get three extra episodes a, a month, and we're doing them. We're doing some more uh, out out for the public for your pleasure as well. Um, so that's the best way to get it done. Uh, hop on over there and, and check all that out. So. Uh, Austin, be sure to go check him out at Austin Abbott at two B's, two T's and two F's on the Twitters. The guy is just straight crushing over there. Just like, uh, he did about an hour ago at the gym, you know, just, just straight reps, baby. Uh, he's just putting it up. So go check that out. And, uh, until next time, keep it locked and loaded. Peace. <laughs>